Hi, I'm Norm Peterson. We're in the carpenter shop at Historic Richmond Town. And what we're looking at today is a, a copy of a candle box, uh, late 18th century, early 19th century, the original. Uh, this is a copy. It is a long box for candles that obviously are long. Uh, I think that the reason for candle boxes, aside from keeping something handy in that day, was that the thing that you were putting in the box might be eaten by mice. And uh, on farms, very often have mice. Mice are good at getting into things. And the candles at that time would have been made from beef tallow, which is, as I understand it, refined beef fat and for mice, delicious. So you're protecting your candles with a box. Uh, the original uh, is has this kind of carving on it. Here's my partially done uh, replacement for this one. The carving on this was uh, limited in its scope, meaning they had a certain number of things that they did over and over again. Uh, it's shallow carving. These are the ends. And the way this is put together is using a, a joinery called, called a rabbit joint. You can see part of the edge, back edge of the front has been removed, and that's what the side pieces fit into. It is a simple joint uh, which is quite strong. Uh, these people were doing things in the, in the countryside in the simplest, quickest way they could, as long as it was effective. So they weren't making very elaborate joints. They wanted joints uh, to hold something together effectively. Uh, this box takes a while to do. The carving takes longer than any other part. Uh, if I understand it correctly, in this context of people making things in the countryside, when they were when they decorated a box like this uh, with carving, they were going to extra trouble. And it seems to me that it seems to have indicated that it was a gift. Uh, these are not people that spent a lot of time decorating things. Apparently they had other things to do. In many cases they were farmers. But this is partly done. It'll take a while to do. Uh, it'll be painted. Uh, one of the few colors that these people had access to, this is yellow ochre. Uh, being a 21st century person, I'm really not that crazy about yellow ochre personally. Uh, but it was used commonly, I think partly because it was uh, an inexpensive pigment which you added to your paint. Uh, red ochre, uh, same color but a reddish, you can see stuff over in the corner there, uh, very common also. It did not have a, at this point, middle of the 1800s, a great array of uh, colors, so they were limited. Uh, so whether I like it or not, I paint some of the things I make with yellow ochre uh, to be authentic. And we are trying to be authentic here. We're trying as hard as we can to make it look the way it would have looked then if you or I could have walked into a shop like this then. Thanks for watching.